okay so uh, good morning to all of you for this and welcome to this workshop on research methods in education technology i am uh, sridhar ayer from the department of computer science and uh, this is my colleague uh, professor sana murthy from the interdisciplinary program on education technology at iit bombay what we will be doing is we will quickly run run you through for the next 20 minutes or so on what you what we expect from you in this workshop and what you can expect from us because there is a slight uh, difference in the format of the workshop from what you might be otherwise used to so the first session is about uh, setting expectations and let's begin with seeing what is educational technology now this is a abused term anybody who does a little bit of teaching thinks that they work in this area so let me uh, define what exactly we mean when we talk about educational technology so it has two aspects two main aspects one is technology for education so by for what we mean is we are creating and using technologies such as visualizations or virtual laboratories in the teaching learning process okay or we also create and use technology tools such as moodle or this aview tool that we are currently using for transmitting these lectures so these are the use of technology tools for the uh, purpose of education the other aspect of educational technologies is creating technology of education so the distinction between for and of is that in the case of of there is more emphasis on what to do with the technology rather than on the development of the technology so what we are saying here is that the technology for education aspect has created the technology now you are going to take that technology and see how to use it effectively in the classroom what kind of strategies that we can use so some aspects of technology of education need not even involve what we commonly understand as ict based technologies for example this strategy of peer discussion that is there on the slide does not involve any Uh, mobiles or any clickers you can simply execute it in the classroom itself so that is the those are the two aspects that we are talking about moving on what is research in education technology so i'll give you a minute to just stare at this slide so we are trying to make a distinction between education technology practitioners and et researchers okay so all of us are et practitioners in the sense that we teach students we do things to facilitate their learning we get worried about things like when they don't learn and we work on improving their interest in the subject we work on motivating them and we come up with ideas for doing all of these sometimes we even try some of these ideas in our classes so we become et researchers so we move from being a practitioner to a researcher when we scientifically investigate the worth of these ideas so it's not enough to say that i came up with this idea i tried it in my class and all my students look happy so my idea is a good idea so that is not sufficient so we have to carry out systematic studies to get data about whether our ideas are working and we have to provide evidence to support our claims so when we do these additional activities over and above being an et practitioner that's when we become et researchers so what is this workshop about the workshop is about going from being an et practitioner to becoming an et researcher okay so that's the whole idea over these few days that you will be working with us this is going to be the attempt so before we get queries let me also add what the workshop is not about so this workshop is not about techniques for conducting research in core engineering and science topics okay so it's not about coming up with the next computer algorithm or the next vlsi design or whatever okay it is only about how you are going to transact or teach that subject using the education technology methodologies okay? also since it's about teaching and we are all teachers and we are all underpaid and overworked and all of that this workshop is not about lamenting on the state of the education okay so often in the activities there is going to be a lot of conversation 
and you need to be very careful that we don't fall into this trap of saying that okay in our country this is what is happening in our institute this is what is happening or in my class students are totally uninterested what can be done and things like that okay so the workshop is only about how you solved this problem in your class okay so you might find that there is a problem of students not being engaged and you might have come up with some idea to solve that problem so the workshop is going to focus on solutions that you have come up with rather than problems that are there in the country or in your institute or in your class so how are we going to get there from being et practitioners to et researchers okay. so the bad news is that there are no fast lanes okay there are no shortcuts there is a lot of hard work to do <coughs> okay so we have to do activities we cannot simply listen to lectures and expect to absorb the knowledge so those of you who are in used to that model will find this a bit strange where you will actually have to work in the class not unlike doing homeworks so the pre workshop assignment that you submitted is the first step in this direction so you have already done something you will do many more assignments on this route and enthusiastic and committed participation is essential if you have to get anything out of this workshop okay what is the workshop duration so we got many queries about how is it possible to learn something on two saturdays okay so the point here is that the workshop duration is not two days it began when you started working on the pre workshop assignment it will continue through today and throughout next week and in the next session okay so all through this week you will be doing more activities and assignments so in the sessions you will be doing activities along with your peers and offline you will be doing assignments and the workshop will end only when you submit your post workshop assignment so let's come to expectations what is expected of you so what is expected is that you sincerely participate in all the activities so like i said earlier the model is slightly different it's not one of transmission from our side and reception from your side it's one of suggestion from our side and doing from your side so you have to participate in all the activities so if we say okay find a partner and do this you have to take some effort to find the partner and do the activity you also have to put in the effort required to complete the tasks and most importantly you want to challenge yourself to go beyond obvious ideas so when we were looking at the pre workshop submissions many of you have done this many of you have actually gone beyond obvious ideas and have come up with new ideas which are really worthwhile which are really worth investigating on the other hand there are some who are who have clearly not put in any effort who have simply done the pre workshop assignment because it is something that has to be done so don't be in that mode of some work has been given some submission has to be made and then we are going progressively towards the certificate so that model is really not going to be useful challenge yourself to come up with good ideas challenge yourself to come up with ideas which others may not have tried and that's when you can be successful what can you expect from us is that we have spent a lot of time in carefully designing the in session in class sessions and activities and the assignments beyond that you can also expect to get moodle based guidance from the instructors and the teaching assistants so these are our students phd students in the discipline of education technology and they are the ones who have been handling the moodle submissions and uh, uh, they will be the ones who will be working you through the assignment over the next week so what you can expect in addition is also that those of you who choose to stay with it even after this workshop is over we will attempt to provide you with adequate guidance for taking your idea all the way to make a paper out of it okay so this again an important slide and uh, do take a minute to read these so much of these are obvious actually so when you stand on the teacher side you do expect all of these from your own students but now in this workshop you are the students so 
it is my job to tell you these things and remind you that you do not want to sit passively and just expect us to lecture. Just as you expect your students to actively participate in your lecture, we also expect you to actively participate in the activities that have been set up. So, do not be lethargic, do not put in half hearted effort into the assignments. See the point here is that there are 6000 of you and our TAs are putting in the effort to go through these 6000 submissions in order to identify the ideas that are really worth taking forward. So, only if you put in the effort will their effort be of any use okay. and also do not turn the activities into off task discussions. So, if the activity is about discussing a paper then only discuss that paper do not go off into other tracks and if it turns out that you are really not interested in the workshop or if you are not able to gel with the format of the workshop it does happen sometimes that some people are not able to gel with this format of doing activities in the sessions. So, if that happens you are actually free to leave as long as you do not hinder those who are sincerely attempting to learn you are also free to sit passively. Okay. So, what we do not want is distraction for the people who are sincerely attempting the activities and sincerely attempting to get ahead in this route of going from ET practitioner to ET researcher. So, having said all that what is it that you are going to get out of this workshop what is the payoff ok. So, the payoff is that you will get a running start in doing ET research you can get guidance on getting your paper accepted at the IEEE conference on technology for education this is T4E 2013. So, I happen to be the program chair for that conference and Professor Sahana Murthy was the program chair for the previous edition of the conference which was held in uh, IIIT Hyderabad. So, you can expect to get additional one to one mentoring for the top 200 assignments even after the workshop till the T4E submission deadline and the top 10 will actually be invited to spend a week at IIT Bombay for face to face mentoring and we may even find a way to pay TADA if it is really worth it ok. So, this is what you will get out of this workshop and moving on to why should you care you know why bother with all these things you know what is the point. So, the point is like this you are anyway working on these problems which are arising in your class you are anyway coming up with some solutions. So, why not go the few extra steps that are required for closure ok. So, closure is an important term what this means is that you do not just start a study you do all the steps that are required in order to complete the study also ok. So, you have already taken the first few steps why not go the extra steps. So, that is the key thing. So, it is not like something very different from what you are anyway doing in the class ok. So, some of the benefits of closure which is doing a systematic study using ET research methods and writing a paper are. So, one you get a publication to your name ok. So, that counts in some institutes it may not count in some other institutes ok. It may count for your promotion it may not count for your promotion ok. So, that depends upon your institute and the rules that your institute is working with. But more important than that and uh, more useful than that is the fact that others become aware of your solution. So, there may be other people who are attempting to tackle similar problems and they become aware of your solution and they can adopt your solutions for in their own classes. So, that is the actual real benefit of taking your study to closure ok. And the third side effect as we call it or benefit because of this activity, but not direct is that your skill in applying the scientific method in other areas of research will also improve. So, the point here is that the scientific method is pretty much the same. So, to give you an example I used to work in computer science and do research in networking. About 3 years ago I moved to ET and all the skill that I learnt in doing networking research is useful here. Similarly, if you build some skill in doing ET research you can translate that skill back into whatever discipline let us say you want to invent the next uh, edition of Google or whatever uh, technology the same skill the same systematic study the same way of setting up experiments the same way of collecting data 
doing analysis of the data, generating evidence, all these steps are the same in any scientific method. So, your skill in applying the scientific method in other areas of research will also improve. Okay. So, this was another query that we got during the coordinators workshop, is it mandatory to submit a paper? So, for some of you it may appear to be very daunting, what are these guys expecting us to do? So, it is not mandatory to submit a paper, <coughs> to qualify for certification it is only mandatory to submit the pre-workshop, in-workshop and post-workshop assignments. Okay. So, these are definitely mandatory and once again please give it your best shot and the more effort that you put into it, the more you are likely to gain out of this workshop. Okay. Only for the top 200 post workshop assignments and only if you are keen on completing that study, we will provide the post workshop mentoring for you to submit a paper to T4A 2013. So, let me recap quickly, <coughs> what is this workshop about? It is focused on research in teaching and learning, provides an introduction to conducting research in educational technology. It is aimed at faculty who have used an innovative teaching method or integrated technology in their teaching in an innovative manner and are interested in conducting a educational research study around it. Important points about the assignment, there will be Moodle based assignments before, during and after the workshop, submission of the assignments is crucial in getting benefit from the workshop and submission of assignments is mandatory for getting a participation certificate. Recap on the activities, there will be several individual and group activities today and next Saturday. Do all the activities with enthusiasm because that is the way to go from being an ET practitioner to an ET researcher okay. and not doing the activities will lead to boredom, insignificant learning and dissatisfaction. So, often we have conducted this workshop face to face for participants and usually the ones who are dissatisfied are the ones who have not participated. So, if you participate the chances are that you would not get bored, the chances are that you will learn something and you will be satisfied with the workshop. On the other hand, if you do not participate, then the chances are that you will go away feeling that you wasted your time. So, having said all that, let us go on to the first activity, this is the first activity that you have to do. So, you have to do this activity in pairs. So, uh, give you a minute to read, this is basically the pre-workshop assignment, where you talked about your idea, what is your idea to address a teaching learning issue, what will you do, what will your students do and how do you know if your idea is working. So, many of you did upload fairly good ideas in this assignment, some of you were not able to upload the assignment, which is all right, you can take time now to think about these questions. And once have you, you have thought about these questions, turn to your neighbor, describe your idea, listen to your, your listen to and understand your neighbor's idea. So, basically what we are going to do is that we are going to say first pick a partner and one of you is A, the other of you is B. Okay. <coughs> have you done that? Pick a partner, one of you is A, the other of you is B. So, I will give you a minute to pick your partner with whom you are going to do these activities. So, now we assume that you have picked your partner, it is A's turn to first describe idea. So, all that B is going to do is listen and try to understand. Okay. So, do not get into a, a discussion mode right here. So, let A describe their idea and after 5 minutes or so, we will come back on to tell you that it is B's turn now. Please go ahead with the activity. 